Praise God. Uh, thank you so much, Joy, for the opportunity uh, that you've given me. Thank you so much, All Saints Cathedral, for the opportunity that you give us to share the word of God, for the opportunity you give us to be in the presence of the Most High God. To all the people who are faithful every week and coming to pray at all the different altars, we appreciate God for you. Thank you for standing in the gap. It is the prayers of the righteous uh, that availeth much. So every prayer that is said on this altar is doing great and mighty things to transform not only our personal lives, but to transform the church and to transform the entire body of Jesus Christ. So I thank God for the opportunity he has given me today. I'm going to be sharing on the topic, When the Glory Comes, and it is from Isaiah 64, from verse 1 to 5. I know that Joy has already prayed, but allow me to say a short prayer, and then we go straight into the word of God. I thank God for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to pray together. We also thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the awesome fellowship that you created for us at All Saints Cathedral to meet, to pray, to worship, and to continue to build one another up. We also thank you that every single day we live is a gift to us. We also thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Who are we that you've chosen to use us as your vessels? My prayer is that we will be faithful with what you have given us. We'll share your word in the way that you want us to share your word. Spirit of the living God, once again, you are welcome. I know you are already here, but once again, I welcome you. Speak to us, transform us, and change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Uh, so, like I said earlier, the scripture we are reading is from Isaiah 64, verse 1 to 5, and the topic is when the glory comes. I will read from the New International Version. This is what it says. All that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and cause water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did all some things that we did not accept, expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Verse 4. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? Praise God. This is Isaiah. And Isaiah is praying and he's asking, all oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. This is Isaiah who is praying and at the same time he's talking about our God, our God and what he is able to do. So today, once again, as we reflect on when the glory comes, I would like to say that this topic also talks about when our God comes, because the glory in this case is referring to our God and what comes with him. So when our God comes, he comes with honor. He comes with magnific magnificence, magnificence. He comes with loveliness. He comes when he is a God who is worthy. He comes with perfection. When we just look at the world and how he created it, you look at the sky, you see the sky blue, you see the white, you see the different flowers. And you just say that, you know what, this God is just amazing. So we are talking about when the glory comes. Think about when our God comes. 
our God is an amazing God. Today, as I preach, as I share the word of God, think about our God. When the glory comes, when our God comes, he comes with peace. He comes with magnificence. He comes with his glory. He comes with who he is. He comes with the grace and the ability to do the impossible. As we read the scripture in Isaiah, Isaiah prayed and said, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. When I looked at the word rend, rend is like tearing down. So you imagine looking up to the heaven right now where I'm seated. Uh, I'm seeing the heavens. I'm looking at the skies and they're white and blue. And imagine God is tearing it and coming down. And he's saying that when God comes and when his glory comes, the mountains tremble. Picture Mount Renzori and combine it with Kilimanjaro, combine it with Elgon, combine it with any mountain that you can think about and imagine that you're just in the midst of these mountains and they are trembling. That is how big our God is. When he is coming, he causes mountains to tremble. As we read further down, when our God comes, he comes to make his name great to our enemies. Is there anybody in form, anybody, anything, any circumstance that looks like an enemy? Our God comes to make his, known, his, name, know, his, his name known. So let's assume that the enemy is cancer. I have seen God healing cancer. Let's assume the enemy is dead. I have seen God canceling debt. Let's assume that the enemy is lack. I have seen God providing. Let's assume the enemy is uh, delayed promotion. Recently, I have had a friend, I have a friend, she works in government. And one time we were praying and she told me, Charity, I am tired of waiting. I, I have worked for government for so long. Everybody is promoted and I am never promoted. In, and I told her, you know what, our God is able. And guess what? In a space, I think it wasn't even a space of a month when we were meeting at the next two, three altars. She said, do you remember the testimony, the prayer request I made? The promotion came. And when it came, I trembled. When it came, I was like, no, this can't be happening. I am here to announce that when the glory comes, when our God comes, he comes to make his name known to our enemies. So if the enemy is that your promotion is delayed, he comes and brings the promotion and hands it to you. If the enemy is in form of delayed marriage, you know, you're just there waiting, waiting for this lovely husband to show up. The Lord comes to make his name known. And from miss, you become missus. From Mr. Bachelor, you become Mr. Husband. He comes to make his name known. When he comes, when the glory comes, the Bible says in Isaiah 64 that the nations quake. In the Bible times, we are aware that when Israel would come to fight, the neighboring, all the neighboring nations would quake. They would say, oh my God, their God has come. So that's what our God does. When our God comes, it just comes to show off. Imagine David before Philistine, before, the, before Goliath. Uh, speaking, who is this uncircumcised uh, Philistine before my God? God comes to show off the glory of God when it comes. He comes to show off. He comes to fight. He comes to clear every battle that we are dealing with. And since mountains are quaking, we are told and we remember that song that the God of the mountain is still the God of the valley. So I don't care where you are today. When the glory comes, it comes to make sure that even if you're in the valleys, you can sit, stand, walk with your head held high, knowing that God is working and acting on your behalf. In verse 3, Isaiah 64, he goes ahead and says, our God does all some things we do not expect. I'm here to ask you today, what is that thing you've been waiting for? Our God does all some things we do not expect. In Ephesians, we are told about the God of exceedingly, abundantly, far above all. I invite us this evening to consider the God of far above all. 
above all you can ever ask for or imagine. I don't know about you, but many times, you know, uh, the challenge with being born in the city is you assume that everybody woke up and they had tiled floors and they had, you know, paved compounds. But many times when I go to the village, I picture my parents and say, you know what, God, you mean you could bring my mother from this village called Rubaya deep, deep, deep in the hills of Kabar and bring them to the city. And they could meet my father who also came from another deep village in Kabar and they start a life in Kampala and they, we are here and we have a name. We have a home. Sometimes you don't imagine that. When you imagine the God of Abraham, when God is telling him, leave this city and go to the place where I will show you and I will make your name great. Today I'm talking about the God of exceedingly, abundantly, far above all. When the glory comes is what we are talking about. The glory is the glory of God. The glory is the presence of God. Mountains are trembling. Enemies are scattering. The nations are quaking. That is our God. The God who does what we do not expect. And the Bible says that with the glory of God, what our eyes have not seen, what our ears have not heard, is what God is going to do. And guess what? He says, God acts in verse 4. God acts on behalf of those who are waiting for him. At 6.25 p.m., I want to ask you, all Saints Cathedral, and the people who are on this call, who are you waiting for? Have you ever been in need of finance and you ask somebody to lend you 50,000 and between you and your family, that 50,000 is what is going to feed your family, that 50,000 is what is going to put Yaka in your home, you can keep looking at the phone, looking at the phone, feeling like calling the person, please, what am I sending the money? I mean, they are helping you, but the need is so great, so you are waiting. Today I'm asking, who are you waiting for? Who am I waiting for? As I speak to you, I'm also speaking to, I, to myself, who am I waiting for to act on my behalf? Maybe some of us have connections in government, in you know, big business partners, but some people have nothing. They only have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to tell you that our God, our God of exceedingly abundantly above, our God of doing things which we do not expect, is saying, I act on behalf of those who wait for me, in verse four. And guess what? Let's wait. Let's wait with patience. With patience. I, la I love Psalms chapter 40. It's one of my best Psalms. And it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he lifted me out of the Mary clay. And he put my feet on the rock to stand. Many will see and fear and put their trust in God. That is King David. Many will see and fear and put their trust in God. This is David who waited patiently for the Lord and he had. Have you been crying for so long and you feel like God is not hearing? I want to encourage you, God is hearing. In verse 5, if I go back a little bit, he says, you come to help those who gladly do right. God comes to help those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? Today I'm talking about a God who comes to help those who do right, gladly. Who remembers our ways? The God who does not want us to continue to sin. I want to ask and to tell us that we are saved by the grace of God. And since God is coming to help us, can we give him a chance? Can we consider this grace which has been given to us? And as I was preparing the sermon, the song that came to my heart was beyond all knowledge is your love divine. In that song, it talks about a rebel sinner. And I saw myself as a rebel sinner. And I want to consider to just read you those words. 
But if you can, after this call, go and look for beyond all knowledge is your love divine. He says, beyond all knowledge is your love divine. My Savior Jesus, yet this soul of mine would of your love in all its breadth and length, its height and depth, its everlasting strength, no more and more. We are talking about the glory, when the glory comes. That's the love of God that brings us home. In verse 3, it, so, it says, beyond all praising is your love divine. My Savior Jesus, yet this heart of mine, would sing your love so rich, so full, so free, which brings a rebel sinner such as me back home to God. When the glory comes, it requires that we come back home. And we come back home because we are sure there is love. We are sure that the one we are calling on will hear us. We are sure that when the glory comes, he breaks the heavens and mountains quick. In verse 4 of Beyond All Knowledge, it says, Oh, fill me, Jesus, with your love. Renew me with your spirit from above. As we come to the end of the month of September, where we have been learning about the glory, may God fill us with his spirit. May God fill us with his love. For you in simple faith, let me draw near. May we draw near to God by faith. To know, to tell, to sing your love. So dear, my friend, my Lord, and my King. God is calling us to draw near by faith. As the glory comes, draw near by faith. As the glory comes, let your life be renewed. As the glory comes, Let's sing of the goodness of the Lord. As the glory comes, let the rebel sinner that is on the call come back home to God and accept that he is going to rend the heavens and come down. Brethren, we have already learned that when the glory comes, the sinner is brought into the kingdom of God as a citizen. When you become a citizen, it means, it, it, it means that you are a child. You belong. This is your home. And so now, now that you belong, when the glory comes, God himself comes down and breaks the mountains. God himself comes down and scatters the enemies. God himself comes down and the nations quake. God himself comes down and does new things. The ones that we don't expect, the ones that our eyes have not seen, the ones that our ears have not heard of, that is what our God does. And God comes to help us. He comes to help us only if we choose to live our sinful life and not continue in our ways. We live our sinful life. We don't make him angry. We choose to become saved. And we become children of the kingdom. As I come to the end of the sermon, I want to ask us, will you, will I open my heart and let the king of glory come down? Will you, will I open our lives and give the God, the God who, who breaks the mountains, a chance to act on our behalf? When I was preparing this sermon yesterday, the song of Babidiye, Chitiwa Chomukama, came back to me. E Chitiwa Chomukama, Tewalia Chenkana. Nothing can compare to the glory of God. And she sang and says, e Chitiwa Chomukama, Wenja Uro. When the glory comes, nothing can compare to it. When the glory comes, the difference is evident. You are peaceful. We are peaceful. And no form of mountain or enemy or nation can shake us. When she was singing that song, she also said, Kano Mugumba, Yafuno Mwana. 
Hannah, who was barren, got a child. When the glory comes, Hannah gets a, a child. Hannah the barren. Are we barren even in business? Are we barren in work? Are we barren in our homes? God is going to do the impossible. When the glory comes, we walk on dry ground. If the, the, the waters, we are just before the Red Sea, it parts when the glory comes because we are not moving alone and we walk on dry, dry ground and we cross over and we receive grace. As we come to the end of the month of September, we welcome the glory of God in our lives. We join Isaiah to pray, our father, rend the heavens and come down. If anybody is under the sound of my voice and there is a mountain that has refused and is not moving, may God remove and shatter all these mountains. May God create a way in the wilderness. May God do the impossible on our behalf. May God scatter every enemy that might be in our midst. May God make his name great as he's in the business of doing. Father, we dedicate ourselves to you and we thank you that you give us an opportunity that you show off on our behalf. As we come to the end of the third quarter, we invite you to act. We invite you to show off. We invite you to show up. A musician sang a song and said, making Jesus famous. It's a song for young people. I'm making Jesus famous. We make Jesus famous by giving him a chance to use us, to work in us, and to work through us. May God bless you as you reflect on when the glory comes. May God bless us and act on our behalf. May God quieten every storm and do what only he can do. And by the end of this year, 2023, may we receive the testimony which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived. Father, we are waiting patiently for you to show up and show off. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.